Dan Mastelloni, a partner at Frank Mastelloni & Sons. We are a importer of cultured pearls into the United States and have been doing so for over 80 years. My grandfather started this along with his brothers coming out of Naples, Italy and continue it today as probably the largest importers of cultured pearls into the United States. These are the Akoya pearls. Akoya pearl is your traditional cultured pearl. These are the ones first cultivated by Mikimoto back in the late 20s. These Akoya pearls are bought in what I'm showing you here as a hank form. In order to get this many matching strands, generally in our buying times, we go through roughly five to 10,000 strands per day in order to get just a few that match and fit our criteria for what we consider our quality standards here at Mastelloni. On the table in front of me, I have all different types of South Sea pearls. Start by showing you the white. From the white-lipped oyster, they have the ability to grow a pearl from nine millimeter to up to, oh, I've seen them 20, 21, and even 22 millimeter. You look at their quality pretty much the same way you look at every other. The cleaner the surface, the brighter the reflection, and the more well-matched the pearl, the better the necklace is. These are white South Sea pearls with what we call the kiss. The top of it is a pave set diamonds, an 18 karat white, in the, inspired actually by the Hershey's kiss. Here we have Benny doing some of our matching work. If you notice all the pearls on the table, each one of them has to be looked at from every different angle. They have to be sized, they have to be placed down, and each one is a little bit different based on their color and luster. Benny will sit there for hours just to make sure that two are exactly alike so that when the earrings are finally made, you see no difference between one and the other. We also have the Tahitian pearl or the black lip oyster. There are over 158 different shades of Tahitian pearl going anywhere from a silver white all the way into the onyx black and everything in between. stringing the pearls in the traditional manner. She uses one long string to go through the entire necklace and then individually knots in between each pearl. The reason for the individual knots not only makes the necklace look better, but in the event that it does break, all the pearls don't go falling all over the ground. This has taken Lynn over 20 years to develop this type of speed. She can do about one necklace per 25 minutes to a half an hour. She's really one of the best in the business. The golden pearls. This is out of a yellow lip oyster. The yellow lip oysters are mostly out of the Philippines and Indonesia. They produce a gold, yellow, champagne, and all variations in between. In my eyes, the gold, which is in the proper color, would look like a, a nice piece of burnt 24 karat gold. That provides the deepest and richest color, therefore looking best on a woman's skin. Some of the other things we've done with pearls today to keep them fresh and unique would be the off shapes. I, I find these to be the most interesting of anything. We call them Baroque. The Baroque pearl happens in an oyster when the bead itself moves. That can be caused by a change in the temperature, different currents, or even a storm. As the bead itself moves, the oyster cultivates it in a different pattern. These unique shapes, with really no two exactly the same, gives you a much more fashion-oriented necklace, much more cutting edge, and gives you something that you won't see on pretty much anyone else.